Alright guys, we've been telling you we got a new recovery vehicle coming. Guess who's here? It's time to introduce you to the brand new, none other, Hammond! guys did you meet the newest member of the family yet this ladies and gentlemen is our brand new hemet his name is hambone i just came up with that but rambo rambo no hambone hambone the hemet anyways we told you guys that we were adding a new recovery vehicle to the fleet this is a 1988 hemet oshkosh built these uh, it's basically a cargo transporter uh, material mover just an overall beefcake designed for the u.s military to haul stuff into really any condition. I've wanted one of these for so freaking long. Like, my whole life I've wanted them. The problem is, the government had to stop selling them a couple years back because, well, I don't know the actual politics behind it, but they just became unavailable. You used to be able to buy them, now you can't. So, as you guys know, we went out and tested our tank, the amphibious personnel carrier up in the lake and it went swimming. Well, I did that because we were getting ready to trade that to Joe at Midwest Military Equipment for this. So Joe took my tank, I took his helmet, and I couldn't be happier. Remember the Cerro Gordo series where we were hauling concrete up the top of the hill? This is a truck that could have hauled like double what those five tons were hauling. It does better freeway speeds and it's eight wheel drive. Eight by eight, high speed, low speed. It's got a Detroit 8V engine, like 500 horsepower, um, automatic transmission, air brakes. It's got a material handling crane on the back. I think it's got an 18 foot cargo bed. Today, to initiate Hambone into the family, we want to see what he's capable of. And what I mean by that is that silo right there needs to be torn down. Now we could do it boring way. Let's see. I guess it's just a popular time to tear down silos. Whistling Diesel did a video, a bunch of other guys have done one. So now we get an opportunity to tear down silos. Plan is we're going to hook the rope to the top. We're going to hook it to the back of Hambone and we're just gonna go. Our goal is to not smash the barn, not smash the fence, not smash that fence, not smash any cars, not smash any people, not smash hand bone, only smash the silo. As you can see, this old silo is all concrete, um, but this side of it is very, very rotten. It's just started to deteriorate over the years. It probably at one point in time used to be about eight to 10 inches thick. Now on this side, it's maybe four to six inches. The other side is in better shape, which is why, which is actually nice because since we're gonna pull it that way, we want this side to be the nasty side. This side is not as bad, but still, I mean, this is, I mean, literally just a matter of time before this thing just came crumbling down. I think it's about 30 feet tall. Um, probably, how wide around is it? 13 feet. 13? No, circumference? Yeah. 44. How wide, just the, the diameter? Yeah. 13. 13 foot diameter, 30 feet tall, and about eight, eight inches thick all the way through. So my prediction is that the Hema is just gonna pull it straight down. We won't even have to get a running start. Probably just gonna hook on and just crawl through it, maybe. If not, then we'll continue to progressively get more aggressive with a running start and stuff like that. But uh, either way, this is gonna be very exciting because it's full blown just horsepower and destruction. <laughs>
Guys, we're gonna stop this video real quick because I need to show you something kind of mind blowing. So as many of you know, Credit MRI sponsors a ton of our videos, including this one. And I was trying to find a good way to show you why credit scores are really important. And I got one. So let's say you're shopping for a new car or truck and you go to our website and you find a truck you like for 48 grand. You're gonna type in $48,000 in the loan amount. You go down to five year term and let's say you have amazing credit, bam. 781 to 850 means you're gonna get a 3% interest rate. You're gonna pay about $4,000 in interest over the life of that loan. Let's say you have average credit. Interest rate jumps up to 7.14. Total interest paid, 9,200. Let's say you have bad credit. All of a sudden interest rates jump to like 13, 14, 15%. Guys, you could end up paying close to $19,000 in interest. Guys, $19,000 on a $48,000 truck. That means you paid $67,000 for that truck over the life of the loan, which is absolutely out of control. It's crazy, but the good news is there's a solution. You do not have to live with bad credit forever, which is why we're talking about Credit MRI. They are a company that fixes your credit. They remove all the negative items, but the best part is they only charge you for what they remove. So they're not gonna say, give us a bunch of money and then we'll go to work and they do nothing. That's not how they work. They say, yes, we'll fix your credit, bam. Negative item removed, now you pay. Next item, now you pay. Guys, it works. It's simple and it's one of the best companies in the industry and the only company I've ever found that you can actually pay after they do the work. So click the link in my description below. You're gonna get $20 off your first invoice and get fixing your credit now because those interest rates are ridiculous. It turns out trying to lasso a giant cement silo, it's not as easy as it looks. I'm trying to get the rigging wrapped around. Uh, we don't want to go to the very top, but we want to be above the center. So we're going to about the two thirds mark because we're hoping that that's the sweet spot where it won't just break in half. It'll have enough leverage to kind of pull the whole thing down. But like I said, I don't think there's enough steel in there to make it like a one piece structure. So if we pull in the wrong spot, it's just going to kind of come off in slices, which is what we don't want to have happen. So trying to get the big sling and the rigging around it right now is uh, a little complicated because we're trying to basically choke the, sl the sling back to itself. And that means it has to slide around the concrete, but there's a lot of friction up there. So right now, trying to tighten that uh, little sling connection right there is proving to be difficult without putting too much uh, tension on the actual silo itself. Because if I put too much tension on it right now, it could potentially crumble with the guys up there, which we're not gonna run that risk. So little bit of a kind of a, just a finagly process here when we get it tightened up but I think we're close. Well there's a couple ways you can do this. The hard way and the easy way. The easy way would be to take that machine and dig a giant hole right here about eight to ten feet deep and then just dig a huge hole dig out this end on it and hook a strap on the top and just pull it over into that hole and then just bury it. What do you think, Hunter? That sounds better than like 10 dump trailer trips. 10? 40. 40. I mean, let's do some math. Real big day. You've got a tape measure? Hold it done. <laughs> Almost lost it. I know. Thing, I've had this one for a while. All right, while they're rigging, <laughs> we're dropping things. While they're rigging up the uh, slings and stuff to the silo, I'm gonna give you guys a quick rundown on the controls of the Hemet. Very, very, very straightforward. They designed these things to be driven by just about anyone. So you get in, you got your on button. Basically turn that, that starts the engine, all right? From there, you've got your air brake. Push that in to release your parking brake, pull it out to apply the parking brake. Automatic transmission, literally like a freaking Honda Civic. You've got right here, your transfer case high and low. You've got your headlights. You've got your winch control. Uh, this is trailer uh, parking brakes, basically controls the uh, air to the trailer. This is your traction control. You can lock the axles together or you can go eight by eight. So this will basically, this is, this is gnarly. This basically locks every axle all together. It's pretty awesome. Uh, you got your Jake brake. High and low, you've got windshield wipers, turn signal, standard gauges, uh, you've got heat, AC, well you don't have AC, you just have fresh air, and a PTO, which is what uh, provides power to the crane and to the winch. You got a passenger seat over there, and you got a big chunk of nothing right there, which is where the air flows back to the engine in the doghouse. 
So we're gonna go ahead and start her up and get her moved. Something tells me the neighbors might have just caught on to what's going on and uh, she may be calling the police. Maybe not. Definitely taking lots of pictures. So I'm hooked up and I want to show you guys the area that I'm working with because it's not very big. I have to be able to accelerate hard enough to be able to break the silo, which is probably going to be about 10 feet in front of where I'm at now. And then I have to use the remaining 10 feet or whatever it is into that bush to be able to outrun the silo falling on top of me. So I'm going to kind of like cruise that way and then like turn into that bush a little bit. Uh, I just really hope that I have enough room to get away from it because that would suck to have that fall. Let's see what happens. See that? That was pretty awesome. It did uh, even better than I expected. Oh, it's just, oh, oh. <laughs> Me and Jim are pushing it down! Oh, we did it! <laughs> we pushed down this silo! <laughs> Manpower. <laughs> Woo! I tried the first pull, just putting tension on and pulling from like a, a you know, a crawl. It just wanted to dig. Second pull, put a little bit of tension on it. That kind of weakened the structure. Third pull, just pew, straight to the ground. And I wasn't hitting it very hard. I was just kind of like, easing through it. I think that this truck is going to be the perfect candidate to try to get something that is very stuck, unstuck, by pulling with a Yankum rope. Get a lot of slack in the rope, see how much those ropes will really put up with. So we still have a lot of testing to do. gonna run this to the dump probably tomorrow once they open and our work here will be pretty much done after about five more loads maybe we have to get like an end dump or something in here to be able to haul this out but that came down really easily well not too easily it was enough of a fight that it was actually fun but the way it came down was perfect it crumbled into like a nice little pile it was very convenient okay my name is Roger call and my wife Lori call the owner of this house was my parents my parents uh, bought this house 70 years ago, and uh, this is where I grew up. I'm uh, 62 years old now, and so I've, I've seen the silo there for 62 years. I, I, I'd wake up in the morning uh, when I went through grade school, when I went through high school, when I came 
you know, so yeah, it's been there. It was my a whole landmark. Life. I mean, we could always tell people Roger grew up in the house that has the silo in the backyard. And so when we would tell people where he grew up, it's, oh, it's the house on 2200 with the silo in the backyard. So now I wasn't around, but my second, no, my oldest brother climbed to the top, and my pregnant mother had to climb up after him. Because he because, was only about 18 months old. Because he couldn't, he, couldn't, he, get, he couldn't get down. Yeah, so he was so, probably less than two. My, my memories, uh, we used to put hay in there for, for our cows. And so we would, we would haul and put hay in there. And then we would play in there with me and my cousins all the time. We, we, we'd play and uh, uh, it was just fun. The scariest thing I think about this silo is, you didn't see it here, my father climbed up on top of it and built a roof over it so <laughs> to, to protect the hay that we put in there so oh i didn't know it had a roof on it yeah, at that point. yeah yeah until it blew off it, it was really strange because again I, 62 years of, of seeing something there and our house you know home that i grew up in the the, the garage that my father built you know so this is all uh, not have a silo in the back uh, is yeah. pretty pretty bizarre. It'll be nice for them to have a backyard here now <laughs> and I'm sure they're glad to not have the silo sway in with the windstorms. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all right. <laughs> I'm just right. When we got here the silo seemed very crumbly like it was gonna fall apart with a stiff breeze so as soon as I put tension on it with the hammer I thought okay this could be it like just a little bit of force and she'll come down. And that wasn't the case. I actually put all the tension on it, put it in gear, started giving it gas, and it just started spinning the tires. She started to hop a little bit. You gotta realize this truck has 53 inch tires and has eight of them, and all eight of them are engaged. So to be able to spin eight 53 inch tires under a heavy load like that, it takes some serious torque and horsepower. Granted, the, the ground's really uh, wet right now, so we don't have great traction. So I backed up, put about three feet of slack in it, bam, hit it again. That shook everything, like all the guys were like, whoa! And then I didn't accelerate through that because I didn't want to start hopping again. So I backed up another three feet, maybe five feet, and hit it with about five feet of slack on the line, and it just was awesome. I felt the helmet dig in, get traction, and it just started going. So I was going that way, which meant the silo was coming with me. Looked in my rearview mirror and it just did the most perfect crumble ever. So after today's test, I feel really good about the Hemet and my trade and, and me acquiring it. Some thoughts that I have, I'm gonna try to figure out how to get a little more horsepower out of it, if possible. So if any Detroit guys know, or if you've had any experience working on an 8B92 on the Hemet uh, and getting extra power out of them, let me know. I know it's a finicky motor and they're already turned kind of way up. Um, I think we're gonna add a, a winch, maybe a two inches, uh, so that the recovery capabilities are just like second to none. I definitely don't think this is gonna float like the personnel carrier did. I think if we drove this in the water, it would probably just keep driving to the bottom of the lake.